So in this video, we're going to find the residue of this function here, 3e to the iz over z plus 2i cubed. So how are we going to go about this? So just have a little scout around the function and see what you can see. The numerator, 3e to the iz, okay, no problem, that's fine. The denominator looks a little bit troublesome. We've got this cubed power, uh, which could make things a little bit difficult. Now, one thing not to do is to foil this out. That's not going to work. That's going to make things way too complicated. So there's a method we can use, which involves differentiation and finding a limit. Um, so first of all, let's find the pole, see where the pole is at. So z plus 2i, let's start with that, z plus 2i equals 0, z equals minus 2i. So that's our pole. And as we've got the cube there, the pole is of order 3, is what we say. So it's a pole of, we call it alpha equals minus 2i of order 3. So this 3 is going to be important when we're trying to work out our residue of this function here. That's going to come in really useful. And obviously, knowing where the pole is minus 2i, we need that as well. So the formula we're going to use is the residue of f at alpha equals 1 over n minus 1 factorial, okay, where n is the order of the function. So here we have n equals the order, which equals 3. So that's very important. And then now what we do is we find the limit as z approaches alpha of n minus 1 is going to be the theme for this. So the derivative n minus 1 of dz n minus 1 of f, f of z minus alpha. Okay. Now, z minus alpha is very important here because that's where our pole is and that's to the power of n. So z minus alpha to the power of n, that's going to be this one here, okay? And then what we do is there, we then multiply this by the rest of the function, which is, we call it f of alpha, which is what's left behind. Okay, let's see what we can do now. We know what the n is, the n is 3, so we can plug that in, that's no problem. We know our alpha, that's where the pole is. That's the pole of alpha equals minus 2i. So we're pretty much ready to go and plug all this in. So let's just box this off. The residue of f comma alpha equals 1 over n minus 1, that's 2. So 2 factorial, let me just write that down like that. The limit as z approaches alpha, n minus 1 is 2, so we need to find the second derivative of our function. So let's write that down as d2 over dz2 of f z minus, minus 2i, so basically we could write that as z plus 2i to the power of n, which is cubed, and then our function at alpha. Okay, so f at minus 2i. Let's now work out our derivative of what's left here. So we've got f of z plus 2i. So our function here is at minus 2i. So if z is minus 2i, this disappears. So that all goes away f of z plus 2i, that's f of 0 basically. So let's write this down here at, uh, let's write this around differently, at z equals minus 2i, f of z plus 2i equals 0. So therefore this is going to disappear. 
from our what we need to find the derivative of. So that will disappear. So now what we're left with, we need to find the derivative of this function here. So 3e to the iz. So, so f equals 3e to the iz. f prime. Okay, i is a constant multiple. Bring that to the front. And the iz stays. So now we've got 3ie to the iz. And now we need to find a second derivative, according to this. So f double prime. Again, bring the i to the front. 3i squared e to the iz. e to the iz always stays. 3i squared is just minus 3. So that's minus 3e to the iz. So minus 3e to the iz at minus 2i. So let's plug that in now. So we now get minus 3e i times minus 2i, which equals minus 2i times i, well i squared is minus 1, times minus 2 is just plus 2. So that gives us minus 3e to the 2. So let's go through this function here. Oh, let's put a nice bracket there. So now we can say the residue of f at minus 2i, put our value in for the alpha, equals 1 half. Now the limit as z approaches alpha, i.e. z approaches minus 2i, of our function here now, minus 3e to the 2. And at minus 2i, there's no z left in here yet. Now, here now if we plug that in, so that's minus 3e to the 2. That's what we've worked out here. That takes care of that. That's why we've got that there. So at minus 2i, that is our answer. Minus 3e to the 2, that's the limit. So all we need to do now is distribute the half into this. So then we get the residue of f at minus 2i equals... Half times minus 3 is basically minus 3 over 2, and then e squared. You could type e squared into your calculator. You'll get a big, long amount of decimal places for that. But just leave it as that. That gives it in its exact form. So that is going to give us our answer.